For test one, the first question says, make a Pareto chart for column A. And does note that on a smartphone, you may have to copy the data to a blank tab to prevent scrambling the rows of the whole spreadsheet. Uh, by that, uh, what is meant is if you select it, uh, tap it, there's no way to sort it from here. If you tap on the B at the head of the column and tap here, and then sort this data, Z to A, Pareto, that does get the first table sorted into the correct format, but this has now sorted column D in a fairly random looking order. Cassandra's at the top, Angie's been moved out of the first spot. It actually sorted F, although you can't tell, but you can really see it over here. The questions have all gotten scrambled. So that won't work for sorting this data. So let's undo that. Uh, uh, much as it suggests, you'll have to go ahead and select this data and then tap, copy, hit the check and go to your second tab. So that you're working on a clean sheet, if you will. And now you can see I've got that there. Now you might think, the, you can certainly try, you just tap on B and let's see if we can sort that in reverse order. And this time it worked. I don't, I can't tell you uh, why I did not have to freeze row one, but the uh, Vitruck has remained at 2.89. This is the average on the Comet essay test for the high schools of 2020. Scores, faculty feel that scores above 40 generally indicate a sign of uh, students who are probably uh, up at closer to college ready writing skills. Uh, above 45 would be college, or more likely to be considered college ready, but above 40 is a, it would be a good average. And uh, even an average like a 37 here at PICS is an average that means a, a large number of students are actually writing above 40. It's an excellent result. Well, to make the chart, all I have to do is uh, hit plus chart at this point. And there's my Pareto chart. The legend is actually in the way. I don't need that. It says it at the top already. It's redundant. So I'll take it off. And now I can see all of the schools in order. And I can see how the scores go. Any uh, of cons of some concern is always that the, the, there's three high schools off the end there that are unusually weak, even compared to other schools in the nation. Uh, but that's that. That can be just left there. That chart. Have to press the check to get back to the data tab here. And now B says give a hist nominal level histogram of the most popular names on the 2019 comet. These come from the 2019 comet. The first table is from the 2020 comet. Uh, so the most popular names, and uh, one of the nice features of uh, Google Sheets, I'll turn off this legend too, of Google Sheets is that you can do these histograms just, just, like, just like that, basically. That's it, that's the histogram. Now, the, the mode for nominal level data is a word, not a number. This is nominal level data. And so the mode is, as it was for car manufacturers, it was Toyota, the most frequently occurring car manufacturer uh, seen on Pompey's Toyota. Um, so uh, the mode here is Nicole. The mode is Nicole. It, there's no function you can use. You look at the chart and the tallest column is Nicole. There were six uh, Nicoles, who sat the 2019 uh, Comet Test. There were six of them, uh, followed by uh, five Jameses and five Ryans. And then came uh, Angie and Cassandra and, and on down the list. There were four each of those and the four students uh, and who, with that name. For, let me move this out of the way so I can get at the data in C. Make a histogram of C. I just select that data and tell it I want a chart. I don't want a line chart. This is racial level data. 
So I can use a racial level histogram as seen here for the fibble belly ratios. And uh, again, uh, the legend is redundant. I'll just take that off. I don't need that. Press check. And there's that. And I can uh, sit here and arrange them in a different order if I wish to. So I can see all of this. And I note that the tallest column, that will be the most frequently occurring. And that the shape, the shape, uh, there is some skew, but whether it's left or right skewed is really hard to tell. Press the AA button to get back to do some typing. I want to type here. Most prominently, this is a centrally peaked distribution. Uh, <clears throat> that's what it looks like most. There's <clears throat> maybe skewed left or right. <clears throat> a bit hard to tell, but... Uh, and the most frequently occurring is uh, going to be 1.45, that bucket, 1.45 to 1.50. Oops, 1.5. Oh. There we go. Big finger, small keyboard. Based on the histogram, there's 1.62. That's not even on the chart. There's not even a student with that ratio. Uh, Fibble belly ratios is an exercise done in the residential class, in the classroom. And no, uh, the, uh, this data does not support that as a possible value. Not only does nobody have it, but the most frequently occurring ratio is 1.45 to 1.50. I'll throw a link down to how you measure a fibble belly ratio. If you get curious, you can measure your own ratio and see whether or not you have that 1.62. But the 1.62 is an urban legend number out on the internet that the fibble belly ratio is 1.62 1. 1. Uh, based on a, primarily it seems based on a drawing by Da Vinci, Leonardo Da Vinci in the 1500s. Well, that's what there is to that test uh, done here on a, <clears throat> a smartphone. You can also do this test on a uh, on a uh, laptop. The uh, first chart, if I don't see it here on the first page, I know to go look for it on the second page that you're working on a smartphone. If you are working on a laptop or desktop, you could do that chart on this page. You can get the... Uh, the desktop laptop version will sort the, the data here in this table uh, without affecting the other rows. If you select just the data and then sort only that particular uh, area, but it's still uh, still probably a better idea to move it to its own tab so you don't alter the other tables. And so that's why there was this note here on a smartphone. You may have to copy to a blank tab to prevent scrambling of the rows. Uh, of the whole spreadsheet. Uh, I'll uh, get a link into this sheet down below so you can also explore this particular sheet.